This guy, Anthony Lewandowski, is a former Google employee who stole 14,000 files from the company back in 2015. He stole these documents to fast track his new startup Auto, which focused on building self-driving trucks. Auto became so successful that Uber purchased the company from him in 2016 for $680 million. And from the outside, it looks like Anthony was on top of the world. In 2019, he had amassed a net worth of $100 million, but his meteoric rise would not be long-lasting. In 2020, he declared bankruptcy when the courts ordered him to pay $179 million to Google for breaching his employment contract. In this story, I want to talk about how Anthony climbed the tech world and how he managed to lose it all in a couple of months. My name is Jimmy and make sure to leave a like and subscribe and let's get started with the story. Anthony Lewandowski was born in Belgium and his family moved to California in the mid 90s. Even at a young age, he had already shown signs of brilliance. He taught himself programming and had built websites for local businesses while in high school. You can say that he's a pretty precocious kid and in 1998 he entered Berkeley for industrial engineering. And during his time in college, he built the build and sort robot in 2001. The robot was made out of 300 Lego pieces and had the capacity to sort Monopoly money. He also built a portable blueprint reader called Worktop for construction sites. And that wasn't everything he was doing at the time. He even ran a local IT company that reportedly made him $50,000 a year. In 2003, he graduated with his master's degree and led a team to build the very first autonomous motorcycle. The project was called Ghost Rider. The vehicle could avoid obstacles, upright itself after a fall, and hit a top speed of 45 miles per hour. And at the time in 2003, this was pretty much cutting edge technology and it really put him on the forefront of autonomous vehicle research. And his original motorcycle now sits in the National Museum of American History as a snapshot of our progress. Basically, you can say that Anthony was a pioneer in this young field of self-driving vehicles back in the early 2000s when it was just starting out. After the Ghost Rider project, he continued to work on a startup called the 501 Systems, a company he co-founded. The company focused on mapping the world around us. They basically drove around with donated Volkswagen cars, equipped with cameras and sensors. The cars took pictures and recorded GPS locations, and the startup turned the data captured into maps. This allowed you to pinpoint any location on a map and get a good description of what the place looks like, which was pretty revolutionary technology at the time. In 2008, Anthony started another project called Anthony's Robot. This startup equipped Toyota Priuses with LiDAR technology and other sensor equipments to build the world's first self-driving car. And in 2009, this led to the world's first pizza delivery by an autonomous vehicle. And with his initial success in autonomous vehicles, Google decided to purchase both of its companies for a total of $20 million in 2011. 501 Systems became the foundational technology behind Google's Google Earth and Google Map. And Anthony's robot turned into Google's Waymo or pretty much Google's self-driving vehicle division. Anthony would continue to work at Google after this acquisition, and I would say he turned into what I call a rock star in the tech world. He reportedly earned over $70 million in salary and $50 million in stock during his time there at Google. But he left the company in 2016 to start Auto, the new startup with the goal of equipping self-driving technology on semi-trucks. The modifications that he had built reportedly cost around $30,000, and the concept sparked interest from Uber. Uber acquired his company that same year for $680 million, and Anthony was now part of another tech giant. Unfortunately for Anthony, this is the part of the story where everything would fall apart from. Anthony had breached his employment contract at Google by starting auto and poaching 12 former Google employees and stealing documents. I'm sure he felt entitled to the documents since he basically created them. And Larry Page, the CEO of Google, even turned a blind eye to this event since Anthony had done so much for the company. But he eventually opened a private arbitration case against Anthony. Federal prosecutors also pounced and opened a civil case against him for stealing trademark information at the time. They cited the Economic Espionage Act of 1996 and began investigating the situation. Basically, you can see that Anthony had a lot going on. He had two ongoing lawsuits against him, one from federal prosecutors and another from Google. And Uber also got tied up in this mess as well. Uber, the main beneficiary of Anthony's crimes, also faced a lawsuit from Google. And this made a lot of sense because Uber's new autonomous vehicles were pretty much identical to Google's. These three lawsuits began in 2016 and would pretty much be the downfall of Anthony. In 2017, Uber lost her case to Google since it was pretty obvious that they had copied Google. They were forced to give up 0.34% of their equity at the time, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it was worth $245 million. That same year, Anthony lost his job at Uber as he refused to comply with the ongoing federal investigation at the company. And also that the tension between him and Uber had gotten pretty bad because of all the lawsuits. 
After he got fired from Uber, he launched Pronto AI. The company focuses on a camera-based, self-driving system much like that of Tesla's. But in 2019, he was forced to resign from the company after being indicted on 33 federal charges. The charges come from years of investigation at Google and Uber, and they accuse Anthony of stealing trademark information under the Espionage Act. In 2020, he filed for bankruptcy when Google won their private arbitration against him for breaching their employment contract. Because of the lawsuit, he now owes Google $179 million. This was more than his net worth at the time of $100 million, forcing him to declare bankruptcy as a result. And in September of this year, he was formally charged by federal prosecutors and forced to pay an extra $1 million to Google and sentenced to 8 months in prison. You can see that the judge focused on setting a precedence with this case. The goal of the judge in this situation was to prevent future Anthony's from breaching and stealing trademark information, and the jail time he received made sure that this wasn't going to be another cost of doing business for these tech firms. I really hope that Anthony can recover from these two lawsuits because he's no doubt a benefit to this world. And I'm sure that this is not going to be the last time that we hear from Anthony and his companies. And I really hope I can do a comeback story for him in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure to like and subscribe to keep this channel going. And check out the free products and services below at no cost to you. And with that being said, like always, I'll see you guys again next time. What's the explanation? Why now? Well, um, you know, this is really about 14,000 files.